Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 20 of 2020, appointing Iman Ahmed Hassan Dossari as the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, and Sheikh Hamad bin Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa as Assistant Under Secretary of Domestic and Foreign Trade at the Ministry. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 21 of 2020 to restructure the CBB Board of Directors. Hassan Khalifa Al Jalahma as chairman and the following members Rashid Al Maraj, representative of the Ministry of Finance and National Economy, Yusuf Abdullah Mood, Khalid Ibrahim Hamidan, Yusuf Abdul Hassin Khalaf, Sheikh Hamay bint Muhammad Al Khalifa, and Ahmed Muhammad Buhajji. The terms of the memberships are four years renewable. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 22 of 2020, renewing the appointment of the Central Bank of Bahrain Governor Rashid Muhammad Al Maraj for five years. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, in the presence of his personal representative, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmad Al Khalifa, received the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Muhammad bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the Chairman of the Sunni Waqf Directorate, Dr. Rashid bin Muhammad Al Hajri, and the Chairman of the Jafari Waqf Director, Yusuf bin Saleh Al Saleh, who congratulated His Majesty the King on the holy month of Ramadan, wishing His Majesty many happy returns and the people of Bahrain further progress and prosperity. They also expressed thanks and appreciation for the directors of His Majesty to broadcast a Friday prayer in the presence of the Imam and a number of supplicators to highlight the importance of this essential Islamic ritual. His Majesty exchanged with the guests good wishes on the holy month, wishing the, whole, the people of Bahrain and the Arab and Islamic nations many happy returns. His Majesty hailed the cited role of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs in serving the Islamic region, religion, and spreading its teachings of tolerance, moderation, and virtue. He expressed ap appreciation for the efforts of the two Waqf Directorates in maintaining houses of worship and their continuous keenness on prompting people to commit the two precautionary measures to prevent the spread of the virus. His Majesty affirmed that the Kingdom will continue on its path to spreading its noble and humanitarian message and instilling the Islamic values and principles of peace and tolerance. He wished them further success in fulfilling their noble mission and in their service of their country and society. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the presence of his personal representative, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmad Al Khalifa, received at Safriya Palace the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, accompanied by the Ministry's Under Secretary for Nationality, Passport and Residence Affairs, Chief of Public Security, Major General Tariq Al Hassan, Information and E-Government Authority Chief Executive Muhammad Al Qaid, and the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Interior, Sheikh Nasser bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, and the President of the Customs, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The guests congratulated His Majesty on the holy month of Ramadan, wishing him many happy returns and the people of the kingdom further progress and prosperity. His Majesty exchanged congratulations with them on this occasion, thanking them on their kind sentiments and wishing the people of the kingdom peace and stability. His Majesty expressed thanks to the Minister of Interior and the Ministry's affiliates, hailing the extensive efforts of the Bahrain poli Bahraini police in maintaining the security and stability of the country. He also hailed the services of the Ministry provided to the citizens and residents of the Kingdom to combat the spread of the coronavirus. He also underscored the facilitation of the implementation of electronic services and the launch of the Be Aware app. His Majesty also praised the national role of the bodies of the Ministry of Interior as part of Team Bahrain to combat the coronavirus, either through implementing and enforcing the law or through awareness campaigns. He added that through cooperation with the authorities concerned and through the awareness of both citizens and residents, as well as the implementation of precautionary measures, the Kingdom will be able to overcome this exceptional phase and contain this global pandemic. His Majesty wished everyone success in protecting the community. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Rafa'a Palace the Ambassador of Kuwait to Bahrain, Sheikh Thamar Jabbar Al Ahmed Al Sabah, where His Royal Highness affirmed the deep rooted cooperation between the two countries in various fields. His Royal Highness asserted that Bahrain and Kuwait share a long history of distinguished relations. He hailed the development of bilateral relations in various sectors, which affirms the two countries' keenness on bolstering cooperation to serve common interests. The Kuwaiti ambassador conveyed to His Royal Highness the greetings and appreciation of the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, and his wishes of lasting good health to His Royal Highness and of progress and prosperity to the Kingdom. 
His Royal Highness asked the ambassador to conve convey his greetings and appreciation to the Emir of Kuwait, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and his wishes of further growth and development for Kuwait. He commended the stances of the Emir of Kuwait that contributed to raising the status of the country in various regional and international events. Sheikh Tamar expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his support to further enhance relations and cooperations between the two countries, praising His Royal Highness's wisdom and objective vision towards various regional and international issues. He noted the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness in supporting the Kuwaitis in Bahrain, highlighting his country's keenness on increasing cooperation with Bahrain for the interest of the two countries and their people. The Special Committee to coordinate the efforts of the national campaign Fin Nakhir held its first meeting remotely, chaired by the Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation and President of the Committee, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid. The members hailed the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Honorary President of the Foundation, to maintain the health and safety of citizens and residents in the Kingdom. They hailed the efforts of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the efforts of the National Task Force to combat the coronavirus, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who is exerting all efforts to contain and prevent the spread of the virus by applying all international standards and precautionary measures. They also commended the initiative of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to launch the Fin Nakhir campaign. The members also reviewed the goal of the campaign and the committee's task, as well as the beneficiary institution and the me mechanism of joint action between all authorities to achieve the campaign's goals. The Bahrain Red Crescent Society continues to provide in-kind assistance and about 4,500 families in need in various regions of the kingdom during the holy month of Ramadan. As the volunteers of the society work during the evening, evening period to deliver this aid to the families in need registered in the society. The society this year decided to deliver in-kind assistance to unprivileged families and their homes instead of inviting them to come to the society's headquarters in line with the precautionary measures to prevent coronavirus. The aid distribution schedule includes 73 regions in the various villages, cities and governorates of the kingdom where specific days are allocated for each region to ensure its smooth distribution process. Bahrain Red Crescent volunteers have been deployed in small teams to distribute aid during the evening after iftar, wearing masks and gloves and ensuring social distance. The distribution of the aid in these difficult circumstances comes as further evidence of the Red Crescent Society's endeavor to support the Bahraini community. I'm here volunteering in the society and at the same time I'm, I'm representing Express Rent a Car Company. Uh, before uh, these tense situations and times, the less fortunate uh, families, they used to come to the society to get their basic uh, food necessities. But during uh, yani these, uh, this global pandemic, it has been decided that the society, along with the with Express rent -a car Company, they will take care to deliver those necessities to the families, to their homes, to keep them safe, uh, of course. To achieve that, uh, Express rent -a car has uh, provided a fleet of 12 cars, two mini buses, one big coaster, to make the delivery process easier and of course safe. Uh, under the current condition, Bahrain Red Crescent Society uh, continue in providing the uh, food aid uh, for the uh, uh, families uh, in need and uh, it's for about uh, 4,500 
uh, and all the volunteers uh, are here and they accepted the ch uh, challenges. Uh, they will uh, deliver for, as I said, 4,500 families uh, in various uh, regions. So I will give you a small briefing. That's we have around 4,500 families registered. And every year we are distributed at our area here. But due to the situation, this year we are going to the families to their houses. But we are giving around one and a half meter between the volunteers and the families. We are not delivered to inside the houses. We are keeping near the door after we check just only the name or the CBR number. And our volunteers, when they are visiting, they are wearing the gloves and the mask. The United Arab Emirates has detected 462 new coronavirus cases over the past 24 hours after 28,000 tests were administered within plans to expand the country's testing capacity. The latest number of new cases is a slight drop compared to recent daily tolls being over 550 new cases almost daily. Meanwhile, the UAE has maintained a relatively low death toll with an additional nine new fatalities, raising the total to 146. The UAE has also confirmed 187 new recoveries, maintaining its high recovery rate with nearly 21% of the 15,192 total infected patients having recovered so far. Amman has confirmed 98 new coronavirus cases, raising the total to 2,735. 42 of the new cases are Amanis, while 56 are non-Amanis. While the death toll remains low at 12, a total of 858 people have recovered in the Sultanate so far. Ramadan mass gatherings have been banned and the lockdown imposed on the capital was extended until May the 8th. The Arab coalition in Yemen reported that Houthi militia violations of the 24-hour ceasefire amounted to 83. The coalition added that the total violations committed by the revolutionaries since the announcement of the ceasefire in Yemen amounted to 2,399 Houthi violations. The coalition has announced the extension of the ceasefire for a month starting from the 23rd of last April after a previous announcement on the 8th of the same month to cease fire for a period of two weeks. And now we move to the business news with you, Yasmin. Thank you, Mohammed. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Yasmin Ibrahim. Bahrain oil share index has closed at 1,003,000.96 points, marking a decrease of 9.77 points below the previous closing. This decrease was due to the fall in the commercial bank sector, investment sector and services sector. 66 equity transactions took place with a volume of 2,139,750 worth 3,056,457 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector, representing 44.86% of the total value of securities traded. The U.S. stock market shook off a weak start and ended with a modest gain. The S&P 500 ended 0.4% higher after erasing an early loss of 1.2%. It avoided what would have been its first three-day losing streak in nearly, in nearly two months. Technology stocks rose 1.2%. Microsoft climbed 2.4%. Airline stocks sank, but crude oil prices rose. Workers arrived for the first shift at the European headquarters of carmaker Ford. The company has restarted production at its main European car plants with strict standards on social distancing and safety precautions. The plants include extensive cleaning face masks and in some cases face shields. Employees will need to clear health assessments when entering the building. Ford is also redesigning workplaces to allow for social distancing wherever possible. 
Oil prices fell today on worries that a global oil tension may persist even after lockdowns start to ease. Brent crude was down 0.3% at $26.37, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude fell 2% to $19.39. US dollars. The Wall Street Bank raised its 2021 forecast for global benchmark Brent to $55.63 US dollars per barrel from $52.250 US dollars. The bank hiked its estimates for West Texas to $51.38 US dollars, a barrel from $48.50 US dollars previously. Hong Kong announced a major decline in GDP with first quarter figures for this year 8.9% lower than off the same period last year. The long-running U.S.-China trade dispute has also had an effect on Hong Kong's economy. Hong Kong is hoping to emerge soon from restrictions. While that might mean some relief for businesses, international travel restrictions mean it will take a while longer for Hong Kong to return to business as usual. And finally, before we conclude our business news for this evening, let's take a look at how stock markets around the world fared in daily trading. And that is it from the business desk. It's back to you, Mohammed. Thank you, Yasmin. Robots are playing a part in the fight to control the spread of the new coronavirus. In Russia, intelligent temperature checking AI are being installed at places of work and bus stations, while contactless robot doctors are carrying out basic health checks. While temperature control terminals are a new development, some previously developed mechanisms have also been given a new life such as track disinfector. It sprays out disinfection liquid and its tank's capacity is enough to cover up to 3,000 cubic meters. In line of anti-coronavirus devices in, is this humanoid-looking robot now being used as a diagnostician. It can measure not just temperature but also blood pressure, blood sugar levels and some lung parameters. It can also carry out short question and answer sessions to find out details about the health of a person and give some basic recommendations.